Cascadia end of game scoring. This is your how to for two. Good day, my name is Joe Gerba. Today I'll be going over the end of game scoring for the board game Cascadia uh, on this one. So we've completed our board over here. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is score each animal. So we have five animals and they'll each be scored by their individual card. Um, each of these cards has a different scoring criteria and there's four types of each. Uh, stick around to the end of the video if you want a detailed explanation of how each one of those are scored. It's going to score the bear, the fox, the fish, uh, the elk, and the hawk. And you're going to add those together. And the next thing you're going to do is score the biomes. So a biome would be uh, like mountains over here. Uh, grasslands, plains. So what you're going to do is add up the contiguous uh, areas for those. So say we're going to start with the the plains. There's one plains over here, but this is the plains that's going to score. It's how many plains are connected to each other. So you can tell we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this one will be nine points in planes, and whoever has the most planes in between the two uh, players will get an extra two points. So if you have the largest planes between the two, extra two points for you. Then you'll go to the next one, so you'll have the forest. You can see we have a forest of one, two, three, four, because we have edges that are touching over here. And we have a forest over here of one, two, three, four. So our highest forest is gonna be four, so we'd score four points. And we do the same thing for, for the rivers as well. You can see we have a river over here, but that's not part of the river as a whole. This one will be one, two, three, four, five, because this is one continuous road of river. So uh, you add up all those. You get your, um, you add up your nature score, uh, your, your pine cone score, and then uh, you see who wins the game. So whoever has the most points between their animals between the lands and the nature uh, tokens wins the game. So I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on each of the animal scoring. So this section is intended to go over each individual animal. Uh, if you already know how to score, this is probably the end of the video for you, but this is for each individual animal and how to score it. We're going to start with the uh, the A card of the red fox, which is scores for each fox, a uh, number of unique adjacent animals, and foxes count. So while we're scoring foxes, we would start with this one. We look for the number of unique animals around it. So we have a bear, a hawk, and a fish. That's going to be three. So this fox will score three points. This one is surrounded by elk, will only score one point. And this one is only surrounded by elk and we'll only score one point. So we'll have the three, the one, and the one. So for this game, your fox's score will be five. Now we're gonna look at red fox card B, and this scores for each fox number of unique adjacent animal pairs. So, and it, it's increased scoring. So this fox has one unique animal pair, so it'll score three points. This fox has one unique animal pair, so it'll score three points. This fox has two unique animal pairs adjacent to it. it, has these bears and these fish. So this one will score five points. So for our fox total, this will be 11 points. So three from here, three from here, that's up to six, and then the five from having two pairs next to one fox. Let's talk about red fox card C. Now this is gonna score for each fox, a number of single adjacent animal types. So this fox has three elk around it, so it'll score three points. This fox will have two elk around it, so it'll score two points. This one has two pairs of two, but we're looking for the highest single type, so it'll score two points. So from all the foxes, we're gonna have two plus three plus another two for seven points. So now we have red fox card D, dynamic duos. So scores for each fox pair of unique adjacent animals. Other foxes don't count. So for this one, we have only one pair of foxes on the board. Now this pair of foxes is adjacent to a pair of bears and is adjacent to a pair of elk and is also adjacent to a pair of fish. 
So this would score, it has three adjacent pairs, so nine points. Now there are four fish around these foxes, but they have to be unique pairs. So we have three unique pairs around this fox duo, which leads nine points. Red-tailed hawks solitary, the, uh, the A uh, version of the, the hawks, are going to score for each hawk that is not adjacent to any other hawk. So right now we have one up here that's not adjacent to any other hawk, and one down here. So between those one and two, we're going to score five points. Red-tailed hawk card B, uh, connected. Uh, for this one, you're going to score for each hawk that's not connected to another hawk and has direct line of sight. So we have three hawks on the board now, and they are not adjacent to other hawks, as you can tell, but they do have line of sight to each other. So line of sight in this game is if you can draw a straight line from one hawk to another. So in this case, we have three hawks that are not adjacent to another hawk, that are in line of sight of another hawk. So this card will score nine points. Red-tailed hawk card C, network, scores for each direct line of sight between two non-adjacent hawks. So on the board here, we have three hawks, uh, and this one can draw line of sight to this one, neither are adjacent, and this one can draw line of sight to this one in that straight line. So this one will score six points because we have two uh, kind of line of sights between our hawks that we have. Now, if they were uh, adjacent, they wouldn't be able to, to score each other. Or if we had one right here, this would only score one because they are adjacent and the only line is right here. So once again, here was our original and we're going to be able to score six points. So this one's a little bit tougher one because you're looking for individual lines and they can't cross over. Um, they can't cross over a hawk. So if this were the case um, and we were way up here, this would score still six points because we'd have this hawk to this one and then this one to this one. We do not score for the line in between or that has a hawk in between. Red-tailed hawk card D, territorial, uh, scores for each pair of hawks the number of unique animal types between them, and each hawk only counts once. So if this were our final board, uh, from hawk here to here, we have line of sight. There's two unique animals uh, between them, which would score seven points. Now we could score that line, or we could score this line, which has also two unique animals in between. Now we can't score them both because this hawk can only be used for a single uh, pair. So we're scoring for pairs. So once a pair has been used, it can't be used again. So in total, this setup would score seven points. Now hypothetically, if we had another hawk up here, now this from this hawk to this hawk would be seven points because once again, two unique animals. And then we'd have another pair from this hawk to here with three in between, which would score nine points. So this setup as is would score 16 points for your hawks. All right, the next card is gonna be the bears. So we're gonna start off with grizzly bear card A, uh, the mating pairs. So this one will score for, uh, for each pair of bears that are not adjacent to another pair. So in this case, we have two pairs that are not adjacent to any other bears. So in this case, uh, for two pairs, we'll score 11 points. Now, if one of these bears is over here, there'll be zero points scored for any of the bears because these pairs would be adjacent to another bear and this one would have no pair. So we're really looking for, if this was the, the final outcome, this would be 11 points. Grizzly bear card B, uh, mother and cubs. So scores per group of three bears with no other bears next to it. So in this case, we have three bears with no other bears next to it. We're gonna score 10 points. And if we had another group of three over here, if we had three, um, a group of three and a group of three, it would score 20 points. But in this case right now, we only have one group that scores 10 points. 
Grizzly Bear Card C, Families. Uh, this one scores per the group size with a maximum group of three. So in this case, uh, we have a group of three and a group of one. So the group of three in any shape uh, you need will score uh, eight points. And the group of one by itself will score two. So in this case, we'll score 10 points. Now, if we did have another group of two over here by themselves with no other bears around, uh, we'd score an additional five. Plus, since we had all three types via this card, we score an extra three. So this card really uh, is good if you are really collecting all of the bears. But in this case right now, this is gonna score 10 points. Two, and then this eight points for having these three bears. Grizzly Bear Card D, big groups. So group size uh, scores from two to four. So if this was our final uh, board, uh, this single bear would not score any points. This one has a group size of three and would score eight points. So your bear uh, scoring for this board would be eight points. Now we'll move on to the elks. The Roosevelt Elk uh, card A, the lines, uh, scores per straight line of elk. Each elk may only score for a single line. So in this case, we have a line of uh, four. So this line of four is gonna score us 13 points, but you also can't forget about a solo elk will score two points. Uh, this does not count as a line because this elk right here has already been used in one. And to maximize our points, we'll score 13 here. Uh, this will be 15 points and then a total of 17. So once again, 13 points for this line, two for this elk, two for this elk, for a total of 17 points. Roosevelt Elk Card B, Formations. This one's a little bit tricky because you want to maximize your points while, while tallying your scores. Uh, right now we have a group of three in one of these shapes for nine points. And these can't be used in the same group, unfortunately. However, for each individual elk, we also just score two points. So once again, we have nine points for this group, uh, plus two, plus two and plus two. So we're at 15 points for this board. Roosevelt Elk card C, herds, uh, scores for each group of elk in any shape. So they can even be touching like this, but as you can tell, we have a shape of five that are contiguous and touching. And then we have one over here. So we're, these five are gonna score 14 points. Plus this one guy over here is gonna score two points. So this group of, um, this board of elks will score a total of 16 points. Roosevelt Elk card D, rings, scores per group of elk circular formation. Each elk may only score for one group. Now what this one is, this one's kind of tough because you want to encircle almost one tile. So for, for this group right here, we have four elk circling this one tile. So that'll be our four group. However, remember these solos are also going to score because they're just one encircling a group and it can't, we can't double up on this hawk or this fox. So we're going to score for the, our biggest group of four. So that's going to be 12 points plus another two plus another two. So that's going to be 16 points overall. So let's talk about our final animal, the Chinook Salmon uh, card A and we'll do the long run first. Uh, scores for each run per salmon, and they, the runs cannot be adjacent to each other. So in this case, we have a run of five for 16 points. And we also have a solo salmon over here for two points. So this board as is would score 18 points. Now let me give you an example of what would not score that many points, is if you had salmon that were adjacent to each other. This would not score any points this would only be a run of three. Uh, this can be very detrimental end of scoring as this will only get you eight points as a board as a whole. So once again, this is how we did have it, which is gonna score us uh, 18 points. So we wanna have that single run, not touching, you know, kind of a, uh, having three next to each other for this type of scoring. 
Chinook Salmon card B, short run. This card's kind of interesting. Scores for each run per salmon, and runs may not be adjacent to each other. Now, in this one, we have a run of six. However, we only score a maximum of 17 points uh, because anything above five is going to lose us, is going to kind of lose efficiency for us. So, once again, this, how we have it, would score 17 points. Even though we have a run of six, we only get uh, the run of five counted. Now, if this is how we had it, this is um, how we had it before, this is a run of five, which is gonna score us 17 points, plus a run of one, which will score us an extra two. So this board, as is, would score uh, 19 points. Chinook Salmon card C. Uh, families, this one is going to score for each run of three, four, or five salmon. The runs can't be adjacent to each other. So if we look at the board we have here, we have a run of five and a run of one. However, the run of one does not score. So just the run of five scores, which will, this board in total will give us 15 points. Uh, what you're looking for in more of this card is several runs. So you want a, sh a short run over here and maybe a run down here to really maximize this card. But as is, this board will score 15 points. And the last card we have is the Chinook Salmon card D, Surrounded. Now this is going to score per salmon and per animal adjacent to the run of at least three. So we have one run of at least three. This solo salmon does not count. So we're going to get one point per salmon, so one, two, three, four, five, and then one point per animal around this run. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine from animals, five from salmon. So this board will score us 14 points. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully some of the explanation of the end of game scoring and the cards were helpful and until next time.